Hey guys, I'm Daniel Norton here in my studio in New York City with Farah. Hi. And we're gonna make a portrait. So I wanted to use the windows as a backdrop and shoot something really kind of sleek. Um, so we're gonna use high speed sync. So high speed sync basically means that we're gonna take the camera above what is, what is considered the normal range. So most cameras have a, what they call a sync speed or an X sync that is somewhere around, you know, one 125th or one 200th of a second, maybe even up to, if you have a leaf shutter, 500 more. But basically, normally with a regular flash, you can't exceed that speed. Now, using high speed sync, essentially the flash uh, pulsates, allowing you to shoot faster. So that's pretty, pretty much what we're gonna do here. And the reason why we're gonna do it is because I wanna get a shallow depth of field to show kind of the windows behind uh, Farrah, but I don't want them to be blown out. So let's look at it. So I've got my Nikon Z6 here, and uh, essentially uh, Farrah's in front of the windows. What I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna set my camera at the normal sync speed. So I wanna shoot at 1.8 because I have this 1.8 lens and I want to have as shallow a field as possible. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to move down to my normal uh, sync speed, which is 200th of a second at 1.8 and 100 ISO, and I'm gonna turn off the flash and we'll take a shot. So you can see that looks pretty good, right? But the windows are a bit overexposed. They're not crazy overexposed, but they're definitely overexposed. There's no detail back there. So we can actually just take our shutter speed because we have the ability to do high speed sync and we can kind of just dial it in when we want it. So I'm gonna bring it in, I think like right there. Let's try 101 over uh, 640. Oh yeah, that's got some mood to it. And of course it also takes down the light in the space, which is nice, right? Now I've got a bit of a moody light going on. Now I'm gonna turn on my flash. So I've got a three foot octa basically to camera left and more or less above Farah, So she's gonna work her chin up slightly. Uh, we're gonna bring that guy in, we're in TTL. So it's going to basically just give us the exposure that it believes is correct. And we'll start from there. Here we go. Cool, that's pretty good. Let's take a peek. So it's got some mood to it. Again, the windows are, are a bit darker. She looks great with the shallow depth of field. It's really moody. And again, soft source. So even though it's shadowy down here, we've got detail. I'm gonna have you work your chin up a tiny bit more though. And also just pose wise, maybe just slightly turn. Just a little bit, yeah. The reason why I'm doing this is because it drops off to darkness down here and then we see the box reflecting. So I kind of want to cover that. That looks good. Um, we've got some space going on. It's a bit environmental, which we're going for. And uh, yeah, let's take a peek and see what that looks like. I'm gonna, I'm turning the camera slightly to get a little more of that other window. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, there we go. Now I like my composition better. I like seeing that window. Her turn towards the light gives the light more wraparounds, much of a beauty shot kind of feel. And it looks pretty decent. Now the only thing that I might change though, is I'm thinking, well, bring your hands in a little closer to you. Oh, yeah, because uh, I'm kind of close because I'm using a 50. So the closer your hands are to me, the bigger they're gonna look. Uh -huh. And also because there's light coming from behind her that's bright, I kind of want to see a highlight back there. So I have another light back there. I have my beauty dish and it is pointed kind of at the back of her shoulders. That's in my B group. I'm gonna turn that guy on as well. And again, I'm just leaving everything at zero for now and let's take a peek. Oh yeah, that's nice. This right here, hmm. it's coming in, but it's not Super, super bright. You can see the difference here. I think I'm gonna give it a little, it's actually super natural, it did, super natural. It did a really good job, but I actually kind of want it to be brighter, more extreme. Actually, I like your arm stretched like this. Like yeah, like how you had it. It's a nicer position for the arm itself, but just maybe just turn the eggs. Yeah, yeah, like a little bit, yeah. You know, the most awkward way that you'd never ever hold your hands. As awkward as possible. Yeah, that's generally how poses work the best. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah, there you go, better. Okay, so now we're getting a nice highlight back here. See on the back of her neck, it's subtle, right? We have light coming around, her chin looks great. We have the windows. And now, of course, I can adjust. If I want my windows to be brighter, you know, I can simply dial my shutter speed. Let's go down a little bit and see, a little brighter on the windows to get a feel for it. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, chin up a little bit, maybe a little more kind of like serious beauty type shot, I think. Good. Do one more. Good. Yeah, that's nice. I'm gonna change my camera position slightly. Okay. 
I'm gonna try that. Uh, yeah, it looks nice. That's very, very nice. Hmm. I feel like I want to really tell you, I want that bee light to be like kind of crazy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a lot of juice here. Give it another stop. Yeah. Now we're starting to get that, that highlight from it. See what happens if you spin your body even more this way. Second. Yeah, exactly. Just kind of beautiful. Good, good, good. Nice. Oh yeah. It's really coming across. And you've got this like, this beautiful light on the face. It's shaping the face beautifully. She's got like highlights here in the back of her ears and then the, the earring and their shoulders comes across a beautiful skin tone down here and then it falls off to darkness at the bottom. So you've got this really nice kind of uh, simple but elegant portrait. And again, we could actually, I'm gonna do one more because I always do one more. Uh, I'm gonna drop all the way down to 200 because now we may not need the high-speed sync. The thing about high-speed sync or any, any tool in your toolbox, right, is you want to use it uh, and know it's there, but know that you don't need to always use it, right? We can basically use it when we need to. And if, this, if the light's going up and down like it is today, because now it's in a cloud, you know, I can dial my shutter speed back to a 200th of a second. If it gets really bright out again, I can crank it back up and I'm able to do that, right? The, uh, the power of the high-speed sync is not that you have to use it all the time, or that it becomes a gimmick, but that it's a tool to use when you need it. Well, there you go, right? We started off the session using high-speed sync because it was too much light coming through the windows, right? To give us the shallow depth of field we wanted with our flash. But as the light changed outside, we were able to adjust. And that's kind of the beauty of these tools. It's not that you have it and you're just gonna use it all the time. It's that you use it to get the shot that you want. So make sure you guys uh, subscribe to Adorama TV and ring the bell so you get all the notifications. I will put Farah's information in the description so you guys can follow her. Be sure to follow me, Daniel Norton, photographer. And I'll see you next time on set.